marvel at mine and Milo's mastery of a marvelous new unmatched set in this board game grotto edition of Little Big Thumbs. <laughs> Welcome to Little Big Thumbs, the channel that's all about finding great games for little players and big players. My name is JP. And I'm Milo. And this is an episode of Board Game Grotto. Yes, it's a Little Big Thumbs series focused on the big thumbs of board gaming. <laughs> that's right. And at the beginning of the year, we set forth for ourselves a challenge to play two games 100 times each. And one of those games is the wonderful world of Unmatched, a miniature skirmish game from Restoration Games. Unmatched places players in the shoes of legendary characters from history and fiction, represented by a deck, a hero figure, and sometimes also sidekicks and other various tokens. The goal is to move around the board, attack your foes, and reduce their health to zero to be the last hero standing. Yes, and today we're actually talking about Sun's Origin, which we received earlier in the year. This is a two-player set. And first we're going to talk about Tomoa Gozen. So she was an epic female warrior from the 12th century of feudal Japan. She was known for her amazing archery and combat skills. And the other character takes us uh, further ahead, about 200 years into the future. His name is Oda Nobunaga, who has his honor guard by his side. This is a legendary leader in Japan who used unconventional tactics to accomplish his military goals. And we're gonna see in a moment how these two characters are, their strategies and methods are reflected in the mechanics of this particular set of the game. But before we get to the to the decks and those specifics, we're going to take a look at the board itself that is included with this set. So our board from Unmatched Sun's Origin is called Azuchi Castle. This is a, a structure that was built by Nobunaga at the height of his powers, at the height of his of his strength. And it's very much a fortress in the way that it is built with several stories to it. There are several layers to this board, several heights. Sometimes it's tricky to move around this board. Absolutely, yes. I got stuck in so many corners and down narrow hallways. It's, It was a very interesting board to navigate. I feel like when I played it as Tomoa goes in, I did get stuck a couple of times, but she also has some really cool cards in her deck that allow her to sort of like maneuver her way out of things. So that was... <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think it's worth mentioning that these are two like really diametrically opposed characters in that there's one, uh, Tomo Gozen is a single unit character that, is, that has the, the ranged ability. Mm -hmm. and, and there are parts of this board that, that really allow her to strike from almost across the entire board because of, of the way those, those, those layers, those levels, those stories of the boards are built. And opposed to that is Nobunaga, who, who not only can only attack um, in close range with melee, but has these, two, has these two guards. Each of those guards has their own health dial, which is the first time we've seen that in Unmatched. And so in, in many ways, these are two characters that couldn't be more different. And somehow this board manages to play to both of their strengths in unique ways. It really does. I've, I've played this set a few times now, and I feel like some, some games it's, it's T Tomoa who wins like easy peasy. And then other times it's Oda. Like I never know how it's going to play out. I feel like they're pretty, they're pretty equally balanced. Okay. So now it's time to talk about the decks themselves that are included with Sun's Origin. And uh, first it's worth mentioning that both of these decks were runners up in the, in the uh, game design competition for Unmatched that, that Restoration Games held. I think maybe in 2020. Uh, and so both of these decks were entered into that competition. And it's so cool that they've been paired together for this set. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to take on talking about Oda Nobunaga. And, and I think I'm, I'm uh, maybe better equipped to do that because I've played this character now more than any other mm -hmm. character in the entire unmatched universe. So Oda Nobunaga's special ability is called Master Strategist. And what this does is it gives plus one to the, to the combat value of cards played by those uh, sidekicks, the honor guard that comes with Oda Nobunaga. And also the other thing that, that comes specific to this deck is the ability called Flanked. 
and that is if an opposing character is surrounded by more than one adjacent fighters from Nobunaga's uh, crew, then there's going to be all sorts of special abilities that can be triggered on the cards by Nobunaga. And I've pulled out a couple of my favorite cards from the deck. Uh, first one is called Demon King of the Sixth Heaven. I've gotten a lot of mileage out of this scheme card because it deals two damage to, to each opposing flanked fighter. And clearly this, I mean, this has been super effective in our one-on-one -on -one games, but the wording of the card also tells me that, that it's gonna be really helpful in, in multiplayer situations and also perhaps in playing the, the unmatched adventures, Tales to Amaze, uh, when you've got multiple, multiple uh, minions out on mm -hmm. the board to, to attack. So, uh, so p great potential with this card, but I've loved it in particular playing with this set. My other favorite card from Nobunaga's deck is called Spring the Trap. This is a defense card and it, it immediately allows any two fighters from Nobunaga's team to swap places, uh, changing who the target is going to be in, in that trap, but also it deals one damage to the opposing fighter that attempted this attack, which really captures that spirit of a of a character who is who is dabbling in like firearms and explosives. Who knows what these traps might have represented? But I love the idea of a ranged fighter like Tomo goes and trying to mm -hmm. trying to go for that that. Uh, that that boom boom that ranged attack, but then all of a sudden boom, there's a landmine underneath you or something. Really like powerful character, and I've really come to really appreciate this particular design. I've loved watching you play this character so many times, and there have been like ebbs and flows in like oh this is the best character, they're so powerful, like. Oh my goodness, I, I lost a few, I, I don't know anymore. And then like refiguring out like how to make them work for you. That's It's been really fun to watch you awesome. figure that out. Awesome. Tomoa goes in, their special ability is called Attack of Opportunity. And it's really great when you can get it to work for you. Whenever, <laughs> whenever a hero is forced out of the zone that Tomoa is in, you deal one damage to them and it can't be blocked at all. It just happens. And there's also a lot of cards in the deck that forces your opponents to move out of the zone. So that ability is often triggered. And uh, a lot of the time when I have seen these characters play against each other, Tomoa does a lot of damage with the attack of opportunity. Sometimes you don't even need to like do any combat, just get them to move out of that zone and there you go. Some of my favorite cards that I've picked out, I have Skirmish. Skirmish is one of the cards that I was mentioning where if you, in this case, if you won the combat, then you are able to move a fighter up to two spaces. And so there you go. That's one of those opportunities where you could force them out of your zone and deal a damage. And then the other one I've chosen was Lord Kiso's Final Stand. So this is a scheme card and it's got a couple of cool things that you can do with it. One being you're able to move up to three spaces and you may move through sidekicks. So that that alone is, is very powerful if you're in one of those situations where you're stuck in a narrow hallway or if you're, you know, cornered in with the two guards and then Oda himself. It can get you all out of a lot of sticky situations. And then on top of that, you can also choose one of the following. You can choose to recover two health or gain another action. So this is a pretty powerful card. And it's there's not even just one of it. There are three copies in the deck. I love that. I think that is possibly the most important card in this deck. Because we saw several times in our experiences where... Tomoa goes and got pinned down. And if that particular card does not come out in that situation, <laughs> then it's really tricky for, for her to, to make it out of, of that battle, out of that match. Uh, but when it does come out, you can see, like, boom, the tide is about to turn in this, in this matchup. Um, what I particularly love about this deck, about Tomoa Gozen, is the story that emerges as she's playing. Uh, as you said, her, her special ability specifically targets 
the hero, targets the other miniature, not sidekicks. Uh, and several cards in the deck also specifically target heroes. So she's encouraged to have that showdown with, a, with basically a big bad, trying to have that honorable final battle, whether it's, whether it's to her, her detriment or her benefit. She wants her final story to be one that will be told for ages to come. And clearly it worked because she's in an unmatched set. Mm -hmm. These are two amazing, marvelous characters, but clearly they're also flawed in their own unique ways. Nobunaga, if, if the two honor guard sidekicks are removed from the board, he's in big trouble. He doesn't have a lot of heavy hitting cards that, that are his alone. And likewise, as we just mentioned, if Tomoa goes and gets, gets pinned down and doesn't come up with that, that dramatic scheme card, then she's also in trouble. So it's like, it's great. Any great character in literature isn't just perfect. They're, they're flawed in some way, which makes them really interesting to play. And they've been fun to pit against other characters in the, in the unmatched universe. And Nobunaga specifically, I had uh, my first loss playing as Nobunaga was actually against Spike from the from the Buffy set. And you know, in the kind of the unmatched community, uh, the Buffy set is kind of considered to be one of the one of the weaker sets of of the bunch. I remember that day well. You telling me, and honestly, I didn't believe it because you had won so many times in a row. I thought you were going to be unstoppable with Oda from from here on out. I think this might be a good time, Milo, maybe to throw up one of our traditional transitions, and then we'll come back with our final thoughts on this set, as well as sort of a status report on where we're at with our 2024 challenge. How does that sound? Bring on the diddly diddlies. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in a moment. Okay, so we're back with our final thoughts on Unmatched Sun's origin. Milo, let's start with, with this question. Uh, of these two characters, which one is your favorite to play as so far? Um, okay. So I do have an answer, but that largely depends on who I know that my opponent is going to play. If they're just stick sticking to the Sons of Origin set, then I definitely prefer Oda Nobunaga. But I really like Tomoe Gozen for playing against people who aren't in that set. So I, I have played this set now 10 times. Uh, I played six times with Nobunaga and four times with Tomoa Gozen. And Nobunaga, uh, I, I really love. I really love playing with Nobunaga. But uh, Tomoa Gozen, I think, is the one that I'm most excited to explore uh, heading out of this set. Uh, I just love, as I mentioned before, I love the story that she tells. Uh, and I haven't really, really mixed and matched a whole lot yet with, with, the, other, with the other boxes of Unmatched. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, maybe a little bit more with Tomoa goes and just to see how far I can I can push her her various abilities literally push <laughs> those other characters out of the zones um, we've also had the chance to play these two characters in the unmatched adventures tales to amaze setting I think Oda Nobunaga so far is performing best mm -hmm. for for us in that setting Tomoa goes and is a little bit tricky because her, her special ability specifically refers to targeting heroes. Several of her cards uh, refer to targeting heroes. And there are no heroes that we're battling against in Tales to Amaze. There are villains and there are minions. Now, I will qualify that by saying that the designer of this deck has, has popped into a BGG forum to say that, that you, might, you might consider trying to consider villains as heroes, specifically for these mechanics. And so I, I think it remains to be seen whether that swings between uh, Tomoa goes and being uh, underpowered with, with not considering villains as heroes, or the other way, perhaps being overpowered uh, with, with her ability to, to really poke away at, at the, the big bad in that game. So Milo, my next question for you is going to be, uh, would you recommend Sun's Origin for newer players to unmatch? I think that there are other unmatched sets that I would recommend. Um, this is a really great set for players who want to get nitty gritty and really, really figure out how the deck works best and really like strategize with it. You know, these are, these are tricky decks. They've got a learning curve to them to really be able to perform well with them. However, however, they don't have any extra rules overhead to them. They're really 
classic in the mold of, of some of the first unmatched sets. There's no tricky board mechanics. Uh, there, there's no like, like boost tricks like the Houdini mm -hmm. deck has 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 those extra mechanics to keep track of so in that sense it's a, like a very simple kind of streamlined version of unmatched but they're they do have a learning curve to them um so so i you know it, it's tricky it depends i guess on the people that we're recommending too but i think this does have the potential to be a decent uh foray a first foray into into the unmatched universe especially if these two characters call you if they speak to you mm. because that's so much what their system is is finding a character that resonates with you in some way. Um, I think uh, I think probably for for kids, this might not be a, a great set at least right away for kids because the mechanics are kind of kind of tricky. Um, I'll qualify that by saying that I haven't introduced this to my my kids quite yet. Sun's Origin. And so my final question for you, Milo, is going to be for rating this game. I don't want to just give it an arbitrary score. What I want you to do is tell me what your, what your 10 out of 10 unmatched set is. And then as a benchmark, if you can give this like a, like out of a, 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 out of a 10 point scale, how would you rate this game versus your, your 10 out of 10 unmatched? Mm, okay. All right. Uh, my 10 out of 10 unmatched game is Houdini versus the Genie. For many reasons, I love it. Sons of Origin has definitely grown on, on me as uh, we've continued to play it. Right now, I think it's sitting at a 6.5. Okay, okay, 6.5. Uh, so for, for me, uh, like I still come back to the very first um, Battle of Legends set. That's my 10 out of 10 unmatched. I still love playing as, as Alice, as Sinbad, as those original characters. And, and because this is very much in the mold of that first set, I'm going to give Sun's Origin uh, a 9 out of 10. Uh, I think it's a, it's a tremendous set. I'm a big fan of it. And, you know, I think that the more you play this set, the more you're going to fall in love with it. If you've played this set of, of Unmatched, please let us know in the comments what you, what you think of it. Um, which character you're preferring to play as, which, which matches outside of this set that you're, that you're excited to see these two characters match up against. Let us know in the comments of this video. All right, so the final thing we need to do for this video is to, uh, to kind of update you on how we're doing with our 2024 challenge, playing these two games 100 times each. Uh, Milo, why don't you give us an update on how you're doing with the challenge? As a recap, we're playing Unmatched 100 times and we're playing Similo from Horrible Guild 100 times. How are you doing with those two games? I'm doing very well. I've uh, keep them pr pretty evenly paced. I have 16 plays of Simlo and 15 plays of Unmatched. Awesome. And for myself, I'm currently at 30 plays of Simlo and 18 games of Unmatched. My kids love Simlo. <laughs> we sit down and play it several times a week, uh, several times per sitting. Uh, I see us breezing to our 100 plays of, of this game. Um, and that also brings me to, to our fundraising goal for this challenge. Uh, we haven't really talked about that yet on camera. Um, we've each picked an organization that we are using this, this challenge to kind of keep us motivated, to push us towards the end, some sort of a accountability goal. Uh, so we are each raising money for an organization. And Milo, I'm wondering if you can tell our, our friends wh who you're raising money for, and, uh, and I'll do the same, and then we'll talk about how we're raising that money. Absolutely, yes. I'm going to be raising money for Caitlin's Place, which is through Coverdale Justice Society. Uh, Caitlin's Place is a program, f it's a housing program for women and gender diverse folks who are navigating the criminal justice system. Awesome. Uh, and I'm going to be supporting uh, uh, an organization in Edmonton, Alberta. They're called Opera Nuova, the Nuova Vocal Arts Festival. Uh, this is a place that really gave me some really important tools when I was uh, when I was really getting my footing as a as a professional performing artist. And so I want to give back to this organization with uh, with our fundraising efforts this year. Uh, speaking of which, the way we're going to be going about things, we're going to keep it like simple and easy. Is that for for every Every game that we play in this challenge, for every game that each of us play in this challenge, we are adding one dollar to our pot of of, of donations. So, um, so if it, when I finish my 100 plays of Similo, I'm going to be uh, contributing 100 dollars to to Caitlin's place, and uh, and when I uh, complete my 100 plays of Unmatched, that I'll be donating 100 dollars to uh, to Opera Nuova. 
and I'll be doing the exact same thing. So I think that brings us to the end of our video. Thank you so much for, for watching along. Thank you for, for sticking around to the end of the video. And, uh, and we'll be back again soon with more Unmatched, more Similo, more Board Game Grotto, and more Little Big Thumbs. Absolutely. So whether you like long games. Or short games. Or games that are new. Come hang out with us. The, the Grotto's, Grotto's Got You. you.